hands of God. I want to. I've wanted to my whole life. I've tried. I even went to an altar and it didn't work. It got worse. I said, I'm gay. I can't. <laughs> I can't change. He said this to me. He said, I'm not asking you to change. I'm like, okay. He said, I'm asking you to surrender. <laughs> All right. Right? Yeah. Put your trust in me and follow me. He said, I'm not asking you to go from gay to straight. I'm asking you to go from gay to saint. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a mate with an S. I'm a butterfly, just a worm with wings. <laughs> I'm writing a book called Over the Rainbow, God's Eye for the Gay Guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the gay rainbow flake comes from the movie, the iconic movie, Wizard of Oz. And somewhere over the rainbow is literally a prayer of their hearts. <laughs> that from the unenlightened state of before Christ, that through a storm of life, it can carry us into a new dimension called the kingdom of God. <laughs> and we are enlightened. And I'm a Christian, and the Spirit is in me, and I see things a new way. But there's still a yellow brick road and yes, the house fell on the witch, which is called the finished work of the cross. <laughs> Jesus became king of kings, lord of lords. He comes into our heart. And I said, and, and he said, I want you to surrender. Make me the lord of your heart. This is the kingdom of God within you. And all I knew, I, I said, all I knew was the Lord's prayer. This is fits <laughs> into this message here. And I began to pray to my father. I was an orphan. I was adopted. And the father that adopted me was an alcoholic and didn't want to have a son. My mother did for her daughter. And I didn't feel loved. And it was confusing. It was hard. And I looked for love in all the wrong places. And Satan took advantage of that vulnerability and that weakness. And he brought temptations. And I went a certain path of homosexuality that they call gay. I loved music. You know, this heart is, but this conference is about the kingdom through your heart. And I love music. I've always loved music. I've loved musicals, I've been in theater, I love dance, I love the arts, and so everything I do, one time, as many years ago, the Lord said to me, if you could do anything in my kingdom forever, what would you want to do now and forever? You know, and I wasn't like Solomon, who had this great kingdom, and said, give me wisdom to lead all these people, because I didn't have any people I was leading. <laughs> so all I could say was, can I just dance and sing before your throne for eternity? With power in your glory realm? And he said, yes, you will. And the power came on me for two solid hours, and he changed my DNA. Ever since then, everything I do has an element of prophetic music. You know, the word says this, worship God for the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. I broke it down, and it means yield to the Lord, who is the spirit. <laughs> for the breath of inspiration is the present manifestation of Christ <laughs> in his heart being expressed through our flesh. Awesome. So this book, get it. Sign up, because it's not yet done, but I have business cards, and this has every, it has every chapter of the movie from beginning to end with my life traced through the book, the movie The Wizard of Oz, because that's their iconic movie. It's culturally relevant. <laughs> and this is how we want to reach people. I use movies, some people have labels. One of them is The Fairy Tale Prophet. That's a new one. I love using movies to explain like modern day parables of the kingdom of God. Grace Wilson, where are you? Has been with me. This is our 25 year silver kingdom partner anniversary. Grace and I are married, but she has been with me for 25 years. Prophesying over me, empowering me, loving me, uh, walking with me through this arduous and joyous journey all over the world. Grace and I. Um, I've, been, I've been friends with Harold. I just want to now just say uh, about Harold Linda. His book, uh, The Complete Wineskin, is one of my foundational books. Because part of uh, our identity is knowing who we are. It's, you know, motivational gifts, finds mercy, sanguine melancholy, or my temperaments, uh, fivefold ministry, five dimensions. I believe that not everyone's an apostle, prophet, you know, just pastor, teacher, but all those five dimensions are the work of the saints. You know, and um, his, your book helped me to find out who I was and how things worked, uh, yeah. which helped me know me more and who God made me to be. 
Also, Victoria's Eschatology is on my website, globalfusion.org, as one of my foundations, because that helps me come into the now. Uh -huh. You know, if you live in the future, you're living in fear. If you live in the past, you're living in guilt. So Victoria's Eschatology takes us out of fear so we can get perfect love, so we can manifest the kingdom now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Um, how much time do I have? Because I can't tell. 12 minutes, awesome. Okay. Um, Sean Bolts prophesied over me at the healing rooms. How many of you know who Lonnie Frisbee is? Can you raise your hand? Yeah. Okay, Lonnie Frisbee was one of the, the uh, an, an apostle sent by God, got a divine visitation from Jesus himself when he was on LSD in the cave crying out, God, if you're really real, reveal yourself to me. He was naked and he was hippie in the 60s. <laughs> he was molested by a baby, male babysitter and had homosexual struggles. God chose him to release the Jesus People Movement to Calvary Chapel, to Chuck Smith, who had some old people, was ready to retire, and hated the hippies. <laughs> he called them dirty hippies. His wife said, God, Chuck, God loves them too. So he said, well, I want to meet one. His, his, his daughter brought home Lonnie Frisbee, and he, he loved him at the door and let him speak. And he said, come Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit blew through Calvary Chapel, and the rest was history in Time Magazine. <laughs> Then he uh, went over and worked with John Wimber. Now, John Wimber was known as the Science Wonders theologian and the Come Holy Spirit the whole bit, but it was actually Lonnie Frisbee who came to Chuck Smith on Mother's Day and Lonnie said, Come Holy Spirit, blew John away. <laughs> they didn't have the Holy Spirit working. Lonnie brought it to him. Lonnie was the one who said, Come Holy Spirit, and they were flying all over the place and trancing out and vibrating and speaking in tongues and split John's church in half. <laughs> but then John wrote the book and wrote Lonnie out of it. Lonnie was written out of the history books of Calvary Chapel in the Vineyard because of his struggles with homosexuality. And because the church was not equipped to help, he had to hide, and it says a man is as sick as his secrets. God, is, this is a new day. It worked for the church and for these people who aren't just lesbians, gays. That's not who we think we all are, but there is a morphine spirit. These are the fatherless. And the spirit of Elijah is here, and he's restoring the hearts of the fathers to the sons. And I feel like Harold and I have had this beautiful journey of the heart of the fathers turning to the son and the sons to the fathers. Pat McCluskey, can you raise your hand? Where's Pat? Over here. There you are. Was teaching on I Like You. Pat McCluskey was a father who taught me how that God liked me. Guess how he did it? He liked me. <laughs> That's there not to like. Right? <laughs> so uh, Harold and I, Harold's unlocked part of my destiny and I got to unlock part of Harold's destiny. I was part of uh, Harold in Africa, Kenya, and it was the coolest thing where Grace and I brought 44, mobilized 44 prophetic dancers from three states and took them to Kenya with Harold Everly and Pat McCleskey and Jim Lucian, apostles, prophets, and teachers, and dancers, and we did processions and back found homes for like 20-something orphans through the dance on the streets. We used the dance to find homes for orphans. How awesome was that? So, now I'm in Spokane, I did a two-year um, musical uh, revival um, with supernatural signs and wonders where thousands and thousands of street kids have been coming to this called Burning Spokane. Grace and I hosted this. Harold's been to it, prophesied to the street kids, different people. And people were having regular encounters and seeing Jesus and going to heaven. A gay married couple came in, fell out under the power of the Spirit, speaking in tongues. One went to heaven with Jesus. He saw himself as the thief on the cross, and the Lord took him to heaven. The other saw himself kneeling at the feet of Jesus as he placed a crown and transformed him up in the air as light as Jesus was. A gay married couple came in to, you know, Willy Wonka. <laughs> He's so overrated. He shops at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the Oompa Loompas, what they wear? Come on, they're all wearing the same thing. They didn't come from Hollywood. <laughs> so, pure imagination, right? So, yeah. So, um, then, now, so, I lost the building, but guess what? Burning Spokane, we are burning ones in Spokane, I'm a burning one. Um, for two years, these were happening every Sunday. Salvations, encounters, visions, dreams, prophecies, going to heaven, seeing Jesus every week for two years. I lost the building, but guess what? The fire isn't in the building. <laughs> we are the burning ones. So guess what I do? You know what I do? I want to tell you what I do. 
if I don't have money because I'm not prosperous, maybe my soul isn't prosperous yet. <laughs> but I work with what I have. If I have a little, I start with a little and it grows into something big. Yes. Guess what? If I have nothing, I work with that. <laughs> I work with nothing and things grow and things develop. It's called faith. It's called calling things forth that are not as though they were. It is the substance of things not seen. It's not have the money and then do the ministry. I don't need you to support me. This isn't a support table over here so you can support my ministry. You can sow into it if you would like in a kingdom way. But I am not dependent on anybody supporting me anymore. I had to learn because of the LGBT background and the prejudice of the church. It thrust me into union with God that I'm already in. And it taught me how to press into him that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That I can walk through walls. I can walk on water. He opens doors that no man can close. And he closes doors that no man can open. And I walk in an unlimited realm by faith of what he puts inside of me. And there are no limitations. And I have found that I'm able to manifest something out of nothing. How's that for a prosperous soul? And I think about it. When I stand before God, the last thing I would like him to say and do is to hold me in his arms and, say, and him say, well done, Charlie, you did a good job. <laughs>